Welcome everyone to 5.2 volumes. This is a great section to start off Math 133 with because it is a continuation of an idea that we had in Math 132. And that idea in Math 132 was that the integral can calculate area between curves, that we add up heights or widths and that gives us area. Now in this section, we're gonna add up a bunch of areas, whatever that looks like, and then we're gonna get volumes. Okay, so let's get started with an example problem. So here we're drawing a region R which is bounded between some curves. That's y equals x squared, x equals one and the x-axis. So I can draw x equals one and the x-axis is already drawn. So here's gonna be y equals x squared. And so I can find the region that's bounded between these things. And now I wanna figure out what is that area. So let me first shade in this region really quick. This is gonna be my region. And I'll denote this with an R as we have up here. Actually, let me put it inside really quick. There we go. And we remember from Calc 1 that we can calculate this area by splitting this up into lots of rectangles, right? And then adding together the areas of these rectangles that are very, very thin, right? So this integral right here is really adding up. And we're going to do areas of rectangles. So each rectangle is going to have a width of dx. And then it's going to have a height, which we need to figure out. And the height here starts at 0. And it goes to this curve y equals x squared. So let me go ahead and draw these in. 0, and then this is y equals x squared. And so each one of these gives us an area of some rectangle. Here's the height, and then that dx is the width. And now we want to add up all of these areas between we need to use x values here. It's x equals 0 and x equals 1. OK, so that's part A. Let's draw the situation for part B, right? Because there's another way that we could calculate this area, and that's with integrating with respect to y. So I'm going to draw the exact same region here really quick. This is our r. And the big difference in this case is that instead of splitting it up into these kind of vertical rectangles. I'm going to split it up into horizontal rectangles. So I'm going to do slices this way. And still I want to add up the area of a bunch of rectangles. So I'm going to use an integral. But now you can see I have a little change in y. So my height is now this dy. And now the width is what I want to figure out. And that's a little bit challenging here. So let's draw in, I have this purple line here. Then I'm going to draw this red line. And we can see this orange thing, the thing that I want to know the width of, because that's the width of my rectangle, well, that's given between the difference between the purple and the red. And the purple stays constant, right? It's always 1. But this red one is changing, right? As you can see, as we move up and down, this red one's changing. But it's changing by this y equals x squared. But I want the width of that. So I'm going to solve that for x, right? Because x is kind of this width dimension. And so if I subtract this, 1 minus the square root of y, this gives me that orange width that I wanted for my rectangle. Again, I need to know where am I adding up these rectangles, right? These areas of rectangles, and that's going to be between y equals 0 and y equals 1. So they happen to be the same. They don't have to be the same. Okay, and so theoretically, if I evaluate both of these out, I should get the exact same answer. We're also safely now back into kind of Calc 1 world. These are relatively easy integrals. So let me evaluate these out really quick. I have my 1 3rd x cubed evaluating from 0 to 1. I can plug that in, and I get out the answer 1 3rd. And hopefully, if we're doing things right, I should get the exact same answer here for part b, albeit it'll be a different calculation. So I can integrate y. Oops, I can integrate 1, and I can integrate the square root of y. And then I need to evaluate this at 0 and 1. And I'm going to do a little trick where I plug in the zeros and 1s just for the y's, and the zeros and 1s then just for the y to the 3 halves. And you can notice, of course, 1 to the 3 halves or 0 to the 3 halves is both going to be 0. And so we see we get 1 minus 2 thirds, and that is 1 third. So either way, we get the exact same answer. 
All right, so in this section though, we want to upgrade and we want to be able to calculate out volumes. So I'm going to have the same region, but now I'm rotating it around the x-axis and I want to figure out what that volume is. So let me draw the same region and I'm going to try to draw the rotation around the x-axis to see what that looks like. And then we're going to talk a little bit about strategy for figuring out, okay, what should be the volume of this thing. Okay, so if I rotated this thing around, you can see this would be kind of like a radius in some sense. That would end up down here and I'd have almost like a disc looking thing. All right, so if I rotated that around the x-axis, I'd get something like this. Let's do another one uh, and another one and another one and now let's connect all these. So you can see this picture is like of a horn almost. Okay, and so I want to add up, and in the intro I said these were areas, really they're tiny volumes of course, right, because we're going to multiply by some dx here, right, so tiny, tiny volumes, these little cross-section volumes, and this should give me the volume of this entire structure here. So I'm going to be adding things up, tiny volumes, right, and so they have this width dx, and then I want to know what is that area? And the area, well, these are all circles, so it's going to be pi r squared. But now we can see that this radius is changing. Let me sketch this really quick, right? It's smaller down here, and it gets bigger, and it gets bigger, and it gets bigger. So the radius is changing depending on what x is. So I'm going to say r of x. And this is good because I'm integrating with respect to x, so I would expect there to be x's. So now I need to figure out, though, what is the radius with respect to x? So I can fill in a little bit here. And we notice that this radius is going to be the difference between the x-axis and this y equals x squared. And of course, if you take x squared and you subtract away 0, just like we did up here, well, you just get x squared. And now since I'm supposed to square that radius, I'm going to square it. There we go. So it's x squared squared. And so we can simplify this down, of course, to x to the fourth dx. And now I should think a little bit about my bounds again. So I'm going to be adding up these tiny volumes, right? these tiny uh, cylinders from 0 to 1. Now I can integrate just like I did back in Calc 1. Uh, and I can plug in 1 and 0 into x to the fifth. And that'll just give me pi over 5. So that is the volume of this solid up here, pi over 5. All right, so let's try to encapture what we did here into a nice definition about volume. So we have S, some solid, that lies between an x equals a and an x equals b. So we have some cross-sectional area of S, which is in a plane p of x. So what does it mean, p of x, uh, which is supposed to be perpendicular to the x-axis? Well, that's this thing right here. All right, so here's my x-axis, and this thing is perpendicular to it. So this would be my px, right? And now I have some area formula, a of x, and this is supposed to be continuous. And if that's the case, then the volume of s can be expressed as, and what we did here is basically added up a bunch of areas, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So let's add up, you know, n different slices with a little delta x and let n go to infinity, and this should look very familiar from Calc 1. This is the definition of a definite integral. So this is from a to b of a of x dx. So in general, if you want to find the volume, this works. Add up the areas. Now this one up above was a very special case. It's called a solid of revolution. And it's nice because it's obtained by revolving a region about a line. So in general, we can calculate volumes of solids of revolutions by using either integrating with respect to x, or just like we did at the beginning of the video, we could integrate with respect to y. And then we need to find cross-sectional areas a of x or a of y. And we're going to mainly focus on two different ways. So the first thing is that we're going to deal with a disk. In which case, that's the case that we just did, it's going to be pi times the radius squared. Or we may deal with a washer. And let me draw out what I mean by a washer here. Right, a washer is like a disk, but it has a hole cut out of the middle. And then 
this washer has an outer radius, which I'm going to denote r sub out, and then it has an inner radius, which I'm going to denote r sub in. And then if that's the case, and you want to figure out what the area of some washer is, well, it's pi times the radius, the outer radius, r sub out, squared, minus pi times the inner radius squared, right? So it's the area of the outer circle minus the area of the inner circle. So now we're going to try a very similar problem. Same region, y equals x squared, x equals 1, and the x-axis, but now we're rotating it about the y-axis. And we want to see what happens in this case. So now you can imagine if I tried to sketch this thing, I'm going to be spinning it around the y-axis. So what would this look like? Well, this point would kind of go around like this. And the point in the middle wouldn't do anything. This point would kind of make a smaller circle. And that point out there would make kind of a nice larger circle. Uh oh, I see a washer already. And here's another one. Try my best here. And the outer point would make another washer with a bigger inner radius. So this thing is looking like a bowl almost. And these ones that I'm highlighting in orange right now, these are my areas. Some washers. So now you can see it makes sense to integrate with respect to y, right? Because all of our washers are perpendicular to the y axis. And so I want to know what is the outer radius and what is the inner radius so that I can use this washer method. So the inner radius appears to be changing, but the outer radius stays nice and constant. Right, so the inner radius is the red line, and the outer radius is the purple line. And notice that the purple is staying nice and constant. The purple is going to be 1, right? So that's the distance from the y-axis to this, well, x equals 1 minus the inner radius. Now that's a little bit more difficult, but it follows this our friendly curve that we now dealt with many times, y equals x squared. And that radius is supposed to be the x value. So I want to solve this for x. So if I solve this for x again, I get x equals the square root of y. And since I'm integrating with respect to y, I'm going to go ahead and put in for my inner radius. This is going to be pi times the square root of y squared. OK, now I should be able to simplify this. This is just going to be pi minus pi. And if I take the square root of y and I square it, I get y, again, with a dy. I can think about what I'm integrating to and from. I'm integrating from 0 to 1. Those are all the places where my solid exists. So 0 to 1, 0 to 1. And now when I integrate this, well, I get pi y minus pi over 2 y squared. And I'm evaluating that from 0 to 1. So if I plug in zeros and 1s for my y, and if I plug in zeros and 1s for my y squared, I should get something like this, which gives me a nice pi over 2. Notice that this is a completely different structure than what we had before. Right? This looks completely different than when we rotated around the x-axis. And notice that we get a completely different answer. We get pi over 2 rather than pi over 5. All right, that is the end of this video. Go ahead, stretch your legs, and when you're ready, continue on to video 2. I'll see you then.